Well guys, it has been almost two years to the day since we learned about RTX 20 series at Gamescom in Cologne, Germany. Well, now we're gonna find out online in exactly five minutes and 46 seconds exactly what Nvidia has in store for its next generation RTX graphics cards. The question people have been asking for months and months and months. Should I buy a 20 series card or should I wait for the 30 series? Well, we're gonna find out today exactly what Nvidia has for store, for store, in store for the second generation, which we know is gonna be the real generation when it comes to RTX stuff, working out all the kinks and bugs. Okay, I just got, I'm, I'm excited. The Defiant 7 Compact from Fractal Design takes the strongest features from the popular Defiant 7 and incorporates them in an all new compact and convenient frame. The open layout provides plenty of space for your favorite cooling solutions without taking up valuable desk space, and the tempered glass side panel and interchangeable top allow the Defiant 7 Compact to be customized to your specific needs. To see the full list of enhancements and capabilities of the all new Defiant 7 Compact from Fractal Design, follow the sponsored link in the description below. <sighs> Holy crap! That was a lot of information to take in. You know, I gotta pee. <laughs> All right, now that I've literally excreted my, my excitement. Excreted? <laughs> All right, we got a lot of stuff to talk about here. We're gonna talk about the things I think is gonna be most relevant to my audience. There's obviously, a lot of the rumors were true. Um, there's some big architecture changes, obviously, with Ampere. And I don't want to spend time on things I think people are gonna, like my audience can particularly care about, like for instance, Fortnite getting RTX real-time ray tracing and DLSS. That way you can see your stupid dances and better reflective and ambient occlusion and stuff. Let's talk about the uh, Ampere architecture though, which is exactly why I think we're all here. Second generation cards for a new technology always give you the biggest jump versus what the first generation card did to the previous architecture. Uh, or let me, let me back up here. When rasterization and shadows and all that sort of thing was, was new, going all the way back to like the GeForce 256, the biggest jump in performance didn't come from the new card. It was the second card of that type of architecture or that type of, of technology. And this is what we're seeing now. Everyone kind of knew when RTX first came out, it was at its most expensive and its most expensive performance hit. But Ampere being the second generation of RTX is giving us exactly what we expected. The jump I think we needed to see to justify making the move to an RTX based card. Let's talk about the chart real quick that is showing Ampere being 1.9X performance per watt better than touring. Now, here's the thing, that, that's, depending on the angle you look at this chart, you can kind of explain it a few different ways. And I think the problem with the way Nvidia made this chart specifically, is I think that a lot of the layman's out there, and no offense by using that term, truly, you've gotta be like almost an engineer to start understanding the way that they're presenting this data. It is not 1.9 times faster than touring. It's 1.9 times more efficient, essentially, is a way to put it. So let's, let's turn this into either a car to get the same, to, the amount of power used to get the same 60 FPS in Ampere is 1.9 times more efficient than what it took to do it with Touring. Now, yes, the cards are gonna be faster, no doubt. There's, why would you have a new family of cards that wasn't bigger, better, faster in every way while being more efficient? This is an efficiency chart. So let's say you have a car that uses 15 miles per gallon to go 100 miles per hour, Touring would be using 1.9, basically 1.9X less fuel to achieve that same mile per hour. But one thing we're excited to see is we've seen over time, the amount of RAM crammed into these graphics cards is often significantly more than you need. That's because the memory is gonna finally do something but besides frame buffering and, uh, and texture storage and all that, it is going to, be part of your SSD decompression. One of the things Jensen talked about is what always held back performance in the past was your storage speed. And as storage is sped up, it's gotten to the point to where the way games currently work, the game is decompressed from storage and it's sent to system RAM and then from system RAM back to the GPU. That's actually a very long, slow pathway compared to the performance of G6X. So what they're gonna be utilizing in this new architecture and this new memory is not only is the memory extremely fast, they're showing on here 19 gigabit per second. Let that number sink in on how much data that is and how fast that is. So what's gonna be happening is the game is gonna actually be decompressing straight to the GPU's memory. 
which is much faster than having it go through system RAM. It's gonna to lead to faster load times, just faster across the board. So that's kind of nice to see memory leveraged in that way. But what the cooler though, the cooler is something that we've seen a lot of leaks about, um, but the 3080 looks like it does actually conform to the more standard size of a GPU by the standard bracket height, standard length, two slot card. Uh, but it's got the rear fan, at least on the 3080, is a direct pass-through card where you've got heat fins and, and um, heat pipes that are going out to the rear of the card and the air is just blowing directly through it. So that air is not only cooling the GPU, it's actually providing direct airflow too to other components on the, on the motherboard, like your memory, your, your memory, your memory, your VRMs. It's just allowing air to not be sucked up by the card and blown in other directions. It makes sense to have it flow through that way. So you've got half the card air going out of this, the case, half the card flowing through it to the other components on the case, which makes sense. They really are touting the 3080 as being the new flagship, and it went exactly as I said, the 3090 is the Titan replacement. Let's talk about the 3070 though. Every single generation, the 70 card is the hero card. It's the one that's obtainable. It's attainable by most people, and it gives you kind of the best performance increase because most people own either 50, 60, or 70 series cards and then that's where they shop for the next generation. And if you can hold out for the two years, we find every two years is kind of the average cycle people will up, update their GPU. Um, I think that like the, the, the lower 10% or 15% of people that like upgrade their cards maybe every three to five years. And then I think the people that have like 80 series cards are usually the folks that will upgrade every single generation because that's kind of their taste. It's, they got a champagne budget, they spend it on that. Um, I think that's also a very lower percentage number than the 70 series card, which is why I think that's where it seems to get a lot of love. We are seeing the 70 series card be faster than a 2080 Ti at $499. I told you guys, if right now you saw this and you're pissed, you only have yourself to blame. I warned you guys over the last couple of months, don't buy yet, wait. Wait, 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 unless you have to do something now. I feel really bad for those people that just bought a 2080 Ti at, at least $1,000, potentially 1200 bucks or more. Like the, the 2080 Ti for the Win 3 cards I have in Nebula were $1,500 a piece. Guess what? That's how much the 3090 is gonna cost, 1500 bucks. Now I know a lot of people are like, 1500 bucks, oh my God, Nvidia. Hold your horses a second here. This is the first time we're actually seeing a price reduction for performance with Nvidia. The 2080 card was 800 bucks. $499 for the 3070, that's faster than a 2080 Ti. The 3080 was less than $800 for a card that is ridiculously faster than a 2080 Ti. And 1500 bucks, which they, and Jensen actually said it, they wanted a Titan level card for 1500 bucks. That's a thousand dollars cheaper than when an RTX Titan cost. And it is just absolutely, I assume it's probably gonna be two, two X performance of a Titan X as well for a thousand dollars less. Across the board, performance per dollar has reduced a ton for Nvidia. Now, how, well Jay, how can you justify that? It's super expensive. If you've got, a faster 3070 than 2080 Ti, and a 2080 Ti MSRP is for 999 and costs $1,200 for the founder card, and you know all the AIBs are somewhere in between or more expensive, and you've got this card coming in at about 40% of that price, and you're getting something that's faster, that's, well, that's like almost 2X performance per dollar as well. So, wow, yeah, that's, that's an, I, I think what's happening is, is, I think Nvidia just wants to kind of just eliminate any chance of Big Navi having any sort of performance per dollar advantage. And I, I hope AMD has some crazy rabbit up that hat. They're gonna, they're gonna pull that rabbit out of the hat. I don't know what to expect now. I'm a little worried for AMD if you wanna know the truth because I feel like instead of just doing the early cash grab and grabbing the early adopters and, and the, the, the PC enthusiasts that just have the money to spend and charging a bunch for these cards and, and just laughing all the way to the bank. I feel like they truly came out swinging. Like th this is like some crazy contraption with spikes and spears and bombs exploding all over it. Like in Mad Max, just literally driving this thing right into battle, just preemptive striking. And you know who really is gonna win in all of this is gonna be gamers because if AMD's performance doesn't come anywhere near 
where these cards are appearing to be, the 3070. You know what that means? That means we could have a 3060. I, that sounded so weird, 3060. We could have a 3060 card that's the same speed as a 2080 Ti or a 2080 Super. And that card's gonna be obviously less than $500. So what is AMD gonna have in that price range? Is this gonna be another Radeon 7 where they had to reduce the price or even Vega 64 where they had to reduce the price because the performance wasn't there and they're gonna take a loss on all of this? I don't know, this is gonna be an exciting fall. They didn't mention this in the keynote, but I have it on good authority through people I know that none of these cards support SLI with the exception of 3090. And that's probably, that's probably because the 3090 is still overclocking competitions and things like that. Maybe it uses the same, whatever the new um, like Quadro performance or Quadro interface is gonna be, which again, Quadro still does allow multiple cards to connect to each other for leveraging that computational power. SLI is dead, folks. We've known that, but now it's like truly dead when their flagship card itself will not uh, SLI. And I'm sure people noticed that there was no SLI fingers on there. Um, yeah, I had, like I said, I have it on good authority that SLI is, is completely and utterly dead, as we've already known, but physically now. The 3090 performance, they're calling the BF GPU um, 8K gaming at 60 FPS. No mention of settings or which titles, but still, 8K gaming at 60 FPS with a single card. One thing I wanna, I wanna kinda point out here though is in the last two years, um, we have not seen nearly as many titles adopt RTX technologies as expected. Jensen specifically said that every major engine does support RTX. The designers of these various engines, whether it be CryEngine or, right, or Unreal or any of that sort of stuff, they send the engineers out to help them get these engines uh, updated and optimized for the technologies. But it's still up to those developers to then incorporate it in their titles. And we found that a lot of companies chose to use it in their new titles moving forward, but there's no, there's, there was very little backwards updates to titles to, um, to, to utilize it. So Jensen says that there are hundreds of titles in development, but if you look at the amount of titles that we truly have in the last two years, it's not that, it doesn't look that great for the adoption rate of RTX. But maybe now that people can start having true RTX um, cards like the 3070 that are attainable, obtainable. Some people might be like, I can't afford a $500 graphics card, Jay. True, but like I said, based on the performance improvements we're seeing at the price, Maybe the 3060 will be you know, much more affordable, 350, maybe $370, and give you 2080 super performance level. Yeah, that's attainable. And once it becomes attainable to the masses, that's when the game developers are gonna start actually utilizing that tech and making it mainstream in their titles. There was a mention of, of Jen Sun talking about, you know, just like the Xbox, which is funny because it's basically just like AMD is what he was saying in, in some of the RTX architectures and stuff being utilized. Anyway, I can't wait to get our hands on this. This is obviously all hearsay. And we know with these charts, we always have to take them with a grain of salt, but I want you to notice there was no like, here's what the FPS improvement was in this game over this game. These, these events are normally two hours long and they're normally to a live audience and they normally do live demos and they show all of these, um, these game performances where they might've showed a couple of like their little dot charts or like it's this 1X faster, 1.5X faster in a couple of titles. There was no actual mention of FPS. There was no, remember when RTX came out, they did the whole Captain Phasma scene where it was like, this is real time rendered at 60 plus FPS with RTX, um, none of that. And this was obviously a pre-recorded, this was not a live stream, this was pre-recorded. Phil and I actually noticed a few editing errors because that's kind of the things that we noticed. We, we noticed some timeline jump around where the background kept moving because he, this was like played back out of order. Um, so we just kind of got a little bit of a giggle out of that. But this was only like a 35, 40 minute presentation and uh, it was actually very lacking, I think, in actual details. We know these cards are gonna be available in the latter half of September, 20, uh, 3070 will be available in October. So you've got quite a few videos coming on this tech. And once we get our hands on it, that's when we'll truly dive in there. Is it worth it? You tell me. If you were gonna buy a 20 series card, is it worth buying these to get more performance for the same money? What a stupid question. Yes, it's worth it. In fact, I think Jensen was even like, it's safe to upgrade now. If you have a 1080, the 3070 is like obviously the card for you. It's, it's like more than two times the performance increase at uh, 500 bucks. So yeah. And if you've got a 20 series card and you're looking to upgrade, if you've got, even if you've got a 2080, the 3070 might be for you. Probably not as worth it. But I can't truly tell you 
which card's right for you until we know exact pricing, we know what the rest of the stack is gonna look like when we see availability. But I have, I have a, I, I think two things are happening right now. I think people are gonna be hitting refresh on that webpage constantly for pre-order. And then I think a lot of people might be running out right now to buy some like 1660 Ti's or, or 2060's or something just because of the fact that, or used ones, because they know right now that used market's about to become flush with used 20 series cards. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. That's been our take on what's coming with 30 series. It's gonna be a monster. History has shown it's the second gen of any new family of architecture, not new family of graphics card, new architecture. And this is truly the newest architecture since 20 years ago when we started seeing rasterization be a thing. So you guys tell me, is it worth it? Are you excited or are you disappointed? I think it's hard to be disappointed, honestly. The performance per dollar is right this time. And if 3070 gives us any indication of what to expect as the stack continues down towards even the GTX cards, which we know we're going to be coming, probably GTX, um, well, I don't know. 16 was one better than half of 10 to 20. So these are gonna be 26, 26 no, no, 20, 2960 Ti's. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know what they're gonna call them, but you know they're gonna do GTX variants as well. Anyway, I've talked enough. Sound off down below what you guys are most excited for. Are you gonna buy this series? Are you gonna wait? Or are you just gonna see what AMD has up their sleeve? I sure hope it's an ace because 